non-made pornography. In one important respect, the old spunkmonger was not a total fuck-up, since he did possess one of the finest private libraries in the country. He kept it in a lock-up garage nearby that he found unlocked and just taken possession of. He specialised in English language paperbacks published in Paris. The highlights were from the mid-50s to the mid-60s, the heyday of the Olympia Press, but by no means limited to this. He also had a soft spot for the Soho typescripts. These were bundles of loose, usually fool's cap leaves, often in a distinctive purple ink of Gestetner duplicating machines. Sometimes they were illustrated with blurred and overexposed photographs that were graphically explicit depictions of Congress between generally unattractive couples, both genders being unnaturally hirsute. The old writer felt such an affinity for these occult items that when he'd once seen a Gestetner machine at a boot sale, he bought it for a song. Literally. He hadn't got the money for it, so he pinched the hat of a conveniently on the nod busker that he'd found. It didn't have enough silver in it, so he'd thrown in the hat too. It was an original 1940s Harris Tweed Deerstalker in immaculate condition, and obviously nicked recently by the bosky junker. The writer got 20 quid for it from a dealer in ridiculously overpriced retro gear who he'd clocked listening to the downliners sect so he knew he was onto a good thing. The writer used to guess Detna to run off copies of manuscripts of porno novels that he'd churn out himself on his Olivetti Lettera 32, an elegant black and cyan machine of Italian extraction. He used a stencil cutting setting which dropped out a red black ribbon completely and he was able to run off as many as 20 copies of an 80 page manuscript before he got fed up. He planned to flog these to second hand book dealers as original manuscripts from the 1950s, but it looked so great and authentic and convincing that he couldn't bear to part with any of them, and he kept every single copy he produced. He got so used to generating these manuscripts that he could do it regardless of his unusual state of consciousness. Some mornings he would wake up and the latest work would be mysteriously finished like in the furry story about a gnome and a cobblers. This was the best of all, because then he could have all the fun of reading them, as well as having written them. Some of the titles included... Jet Sex. Soft Anvil. International Sex Probe. Roughly one dozen money shots. The Sex Organisation. Tsunami of Jism. Arse on wheels! The pink and the grey. Exegasm! My thighs! Spunk pirates! The enormous hero! Cruel erotology! The story of it! The bedroom rooms! And there was even one called The Hindu Philosophers! Fuck knew what that was all about! 